This is lesson 109 on the PS2 port. The PS2 port is this connector on the Nexus 2 board. There's a little jumper next to it. You should set that jumper to 5 volts. An older mouse or an older keyboard uh, will work with 5 volts. Sometimes it won't work with the 3.3 volts. This shows the pinouts of the PS2 port. There's a ground and VDD. Then in addition there are two lines, a clock and a data line. The, sh the timing is shown here. We'll look at it over here. This is the device to host communication. Now the clock frequency must be in the range of 10 to 16.7 kilohertz. And the clock always comes from the device. And this shows the data that might come from say a keyboard. So when you press a key on the keyboard, both the clock and this data will be sent from the keyboard to the FPGA. Data sent from the device to the host is read on the falling edge of the clock signal. So when you press a key on the keyboard, for example, the data line goes low for the start bit, then the clock signal goes low and back high, then on the falling edge of the clock the host would read D0, then it would read D1 on the next falling edge, and so forth for 8 bits, and this is followed by a parity bit. And then there's a lot, the last bit is a stop bit. Now this is what the data really looks like if you look at it on an oscilloscope, and you see it's sort of noisy. This is the clock sent and this is the data and you would read this on the falling edge. Well because this is a noisy data that data must be filtered. So the data coming from the PS2 port you'll need to pass through some kind of a filter. This is the clock signal coming in and this is the data signal coming in. Now if the host needs to send data to the device it must do so through this tri-state buffer. The tri-state buffer has an enable signal. When this enable signal is 1, then the input data goes to the output. If it's 0, then the output is a high impedance. So when you're reading data, this would be disabled and the data would come in through this filter. The same for the data line as well as the clock line. For the keyboard, we don't need to send any data to the keyboard, so we don't need to use a tri-state buffer. However, as we'll see in the example for the mouse, the mouse does have to send data, so it would need to have that tri-state buffer. When the host has to send data to the device, it follows this host-to-device communication protocol. Suppose the host wants to send this data byte. The first thing it does is bring the clock low, and then it brings the data line low. This tells the uh, device that it needs to start sending a clock signal. So remember, the clock signal itself must originate with the device. Then the host will bring the clock line back low, and then the device will stop pulsing the clock data sent from the host of the device is read on the rising edge of the clock. So the host would put out D0 and the device would read it on the rising edge. Then it would change the data next rising edge. It would send 8 bits plus a parity bit and then the device would send an acknowledge bit after it's received the 8 data bits plus the parity bit. It will bring the data line low clock it for one last time and then bring both the clock line and the data line high.